My work is not my life, but it is my craft. What does it look like to build this kind of career? The kind of career that fits into your life in the way that you would like it to, rather than in the way that it just sort of ends up in this default mode. Man, it's been cool getting to meet all of you this weekend. I really enjoyed hanging out at the campfire last night. So today I wanna to talk about how to build a career that you might not or won't wanna leave early. And this is something I have a little bit of experience with. Our family reached financial independence. We hit our number maybe about a year ago. And the next day, oh, thanks. No, that was great. And we got really excited. And the next day I woke up and I went to work. And some of that, to be sure, um, my, my field comes with some deferred compensation. I knew within you know, nine months or a year, we would make more money that was meaningful to our financial position. And that date has come and gone, and I got up, and I went to work. And it's not, you know, just one more year syndrome. It's not that, you know, my wife and I sat around and we thought, you know what, 4% is great, you know what would be better? 3.8. <laughs> no, it's, I generally um, really enjoy what I do, uh, but I understand in this room there might be some concern. I mean, aren't we here to, like, not work for other people? Maybe you think, I need to go talk to Steven. I need a refund for this hour <laughs> of my Camp Fi. This is work. This movie is 23 years old right now. Still great if you haven't seen it. Uh, I'd, I'd ask that you please stick with me for, for three reasons. One. Uh, it's possible that as we go through, you'll see that there is a place for fulfilling work in your life, not work that's like this. Uh, second, almost all of us are going to spend some time working for other people, even on our journey to FI. And I think it's worthwhile to make that as valuable uh, and fulfilling of a time as that's going to be, even before we're like, bye, I don't want to do this anymore. I've got other things I've got planned. Uh, lastly, I have calculated the number. If you took an hour's worth of your money for this conference, saved it for 20 years at 8% interest, you would have 28 and a half whole dollars. <laughs> so put your phones away, I've done it already. So there's a couple different ways that we see work working out in people's lives. And this, I think, is a pretty common one. I think it's, for a lot of people, the default one. Work is just this central dominating presence in your life. And everything else that you're interested in, time with your family, time with your community, this is probably a little bit of an eye chart for you, um, time with, with your hobbies, time for self-development, just gets pushed out to the edges of your time and your energy and your attention, and it just sort of takes whatever's left. Which makes sense for most of us when we're working 40, 50, 60, maybe more hours of our week, are spent with this like one thing, and then we can't even enjoy the weekend because we get back around to Sunday and we're like, oh, Monday is tomorrow. I gotta go back. Now there are some people for whom this is their ideal lifestyle. They'll talk about their work and they'll describe it as this is my life's calling, or they'll say my retirement plan is death. And it's really something that they're excited about. And it's something that they, they really want to go for. And I think that can be a great way to live a life if that's you. Those kinds of people have made amazing and wonderful things come into this world that would not have existed without them. But let's be honest, we're here for a reason. This is mostly what we think about that. <laughs> In large part, I think, because a lot of our work ends up being like that office space picture that I showed before. And we look at that, experience that for 18 months or three years or five years or 20 years or 40 years, think, no, 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 no. So we go this way. And sure, this absolutely leaves all the time in your life for the other things that are important to you, for your family, for your hobbies, for travel, for being in service to your community, large and small, for pursuing projects of self-development and self-fulfillment. And work just, nah. 
Nah, it doesn't even need to be there. Um, but for me, and I think maybe for others of us who are on this journey, this is also not entirely satisfying. My work is not my life, but it is my craft. It is an opportunity for me to pursue and seek mastery in something that hopefully provides value to others. At the current uh, job that I work for, um, I get to pursue something that hopefully one day will change the world. My job is fulfilling a lot of the values that I hold, and I get to come home, and I still get to spend time with my family. I still get to run and exercise five or six days a week. I get to volunteer in my community. I get to very poorly learn how to play piano, uh, and I get to continue to pursue you know, personal and self-development through my reading, getting to come to places like this. What does it look like to build this kind of career, the kind of career that fits into your life in the way that you would like it to, rather than in the way that it just sort of ends up in this default mode? The author and academic Cal Newport, from whom I stole almost all of this talk, <laughs> describes this kind of a process as lifestyle-centric career planning. And when you start, he suggests you forget jobs entirely. Just kind of set aside the day-to-day -day activity of your work and instead fix the lifestyle that you want, looking ahead maybe five or 10 years, and then work backwards from there to figure out how you get to that ideal lifestyle from where you are. In order to do that, first you need to sort of picture the life that you'd like to be living. And the more specific that you can be, the better. So where will you live? Do you love the mountains? My wife loves the mountains. Do you love the beach? Do you really love the excitement and, and hustle and activity of the big city? Or do you really like the, you know, the slower uh, pace of something smaller, something more rural? Who is there in this ideal lifestyle? Some people, they're like, I don't really need to spend a bunch of time with other people. I want to sit around with my books and just hang out. Other people love like large groups of far-flung social connections, both local and, and abroad. But it's worth thinking about like, who's gonna be around? Do I want like a small group of really close friends? Do I really wanna be involved in a broader community? Uh, what role does work play in that life? And I don't necessarily mean exactly what you're going to be doing from day to day, but what do you wanna get out of your work? I love and thrive on the intellectual challenges I get to do in my job every day. Some people aren't gonna look for that. They want uh, an opportunity to interact with the people in their community. Well, that's not me, I wanna deal with computers. Uh, I do love working with my colleagues. They are smart, they are driven, they want to do things well. Some people don't really wanna work with other people. Do you want work to be like this, this you know, kind of a, a bigger focus in your life? Do you want to be someone who is in the room where it happens in your community, either in your business or your town or your state or even broader? Or do you want work to be just really kind of a small part of your life that you can sort of pack away when you're not interested in it and maybe take out again? All these things are gonna look different as a career but it gives you an opportunity to fit your work into your life instead of the other way around. Build up this, this picture of your life as to what it is that you want it to look like, and that'll help you kind of move your career in that direction and slot it into the right spot. Now, I'm not gonna pretend this is hard, and a lot of people don't actually have the first idea of what their ideal lifestyle is, because it's hard work to figure out, and it takes a lot of uh, reflection. I think it's, it's pretty common how do I even know like, what's out there? What if I get to the end of my life and I realize I picked the wrong things to go for? I think there's a few things that we can do to, to help us on that path, and it's largely by talking and interacting with other people. I think places like this are great. I've spent the whole weekend talking to people about what is a fulfilling life for you? What is the ideal lifestyle that you want? And sometimes I listen to someone and go, that 
sounds interesting, but it's not really for me. There's nothing in that that really resonates or is attractive to me. And sometimes I'll talk to someone and they'll just mention like one little thing. I'm like, that sounds awesome. I want that. As you interact with other people, live is great. Um, biographies and memoirs are another excellent opportunity to see people express their values over time and over distance. Uh, documentaries and other movies are other great medium. As you see other people live out their lives, different bits and pieces are gonna stick out to you. And it does take time, but I think it's worth looking for the commonality in those pieces and seeing what is it that makes up my ideal lifestyle. The more specific you can be with this, the better, but be okay not having the full answer right now. You probably never will. I probably never will. But moving forward with intention now to move in that direction is almost certainly going to be better than waiting until you get it exactly right. I took this picture. <laughs> <coughs> Keep working on it. Uh, as you start to develop this, you'll see probably some contradictions in this ideal lifestyle. Maybe you really love downhill skiing, but you also want to be right next to the ocean. You probably can't do both of those at the same time. Um, more likely is you'll find that as you put together all of these things and find the place for work that you want in it, that the work that you're interested in doesn't support the lifestyle that you want to have. If you want to live in you know, downtown Manhattan and your ideal work lifestyle is working in a coffee shop for four hours a week, Probably not. Um, but this is an opportunity where I think our pursuit of financial independence offers us some leverage. You know, we can use our, our spending habits and our saving habits to be able to open up maybe more opportunities uh, than, than we would have if we weren't as focused on those things. And this is a great uh, stage to start identifying career paths that fit within this work footprint that you want and that leads you toward this lifestyle that, uh, that you're interested in. Now you'll find, uh, as you look through the kind of work that you might wanna do that fits within your life, it's very likely that the things that you want out of your work are the things that other people want out of their work too. It turns out everybody wants to work at a job that makes lots of money. Everybody wants to work at a job that provides, um, you know, Daniel Pink describes it in his book, Drive, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Most likely, when you look at what is the footprint I want work to have in my life, you'll find uh, those three attributes spread out in a slightly unique way to you. Maybe you want more autonomy, or maybe you want more opportunity for mastery. Maybe you want more alignment with your values. But everybody wants these things. And when everybody wants something, you have to have something to offer in return. Uh, in his book, So Good They Can't Ignore You, Cal Newport, I told you I was taking a lot of his stuff today, <laughs> describes this thing as career capital, which again fits a very strong you know, analog for us in the FI community because it works in our career like financial capital works in our financial life. It is... Uh, you know, an investment, a base that we can turn and either keep investing or choose to spend on the things that matter to us. And in the realm of careers, this career capital is based on rare and valuable skills that provide value to your employer and ultimately to the customers that, uh, that you're building these, these products and services towards. Some of these skills are general, Usually they're very, very specific based on the career field that you want or even the, you know, the very specific career path that you're in. So unfortunately, I can't give you a lot of like, advice on what these things are. And this is another opportunity to think, well, how do I figure out what this is? And again, the answer is to go look to other people. There are certainly people in the world who just forge their own path and make all this stuff happen out of thin air. Once you've identified the skills that provide career capital in your field, and what you're really looking for here is to separate out the things that keep you busy from the things that actually matter. And it's not always obvious what those things are. And usually we want those things to be things that are not the things that they actually are. That sentence was a little weird, but um, you know, the, the things that they are and the things that they may seem to be from the outside are different. 
you really need to talk to people to figure out what they are. Once you've figured out what they are, you'll want to focus on them to the exclusion of the other things you might have to whatever extent's possible to you in, in you know, your current position. It's going to be harder when you're early career, easier when you're later in your career. You want to say, all right, these are the things that matter. I'm going to focus on these things and everything else I can, I'm going to say no to. You'll want to identify how you can know you're getting better at these things. The better you are, the more leverage you have to be able to shape your work into something that you want. If you don't know how you're getting better, you don't know that you're getting better, it's going to be real hard to you know, turn around and leverage that. Take as much time as you can to intentionally practice these specific skills with the goal of shortening the feedback loops, the amount of time between your practice and when you can know whether or not I'm getting better at this thing. The longer the feedback loops, the longer it's going to take to figure out, hey, I did this a little bit differently this time. Did it help? Did it not help? Now, most people, when they think about using their career capital, the default is, I'm gonna make more money, I'm gonna get a promotion, I'm gonna keep rising. That can sometimes be a trap, and that's not always gonna be what we want. We've defined what we want. We know what we want work in our life to be. As we build career capital, as we build these rare and valuable skills in our job, we don't necessarily have to go to our employers and say, I want more money. We can say, I want more flexibility. I want to work on this thing instead of that thing. These meetings are terrible, and I don't want to go to them anymore. When you bring a lot of career capital to your job, your employer will be like, little quirky, worth it. It's a phi bonus. As you build career capital, you will likely make more money. You will likely get more flexibility. And at some point, you'll get the opportunity to go, this doesn't fit with my life anymore. I won't be able to walk away. And being financially independent certainly gives us the opportunity to do that and just maybe wait and come back. Maybe we decide, you know, this season of my life, there's not really a work that I have the career capital to fit within there. I'm gonna take a little bit of time off, maybe come back. It opens up a lot of optionality when you have the skills and you have the financial independence to let this work fit in with what you want in your life. So the role of work in your life is a continuum. Maybe it's like all of your life. Maybe it's none of your life. It'll probably change as you go through your life. Identifying and iterating on the place of work in your life will allow it to be, you know, to, to be the most fulfilling that it can and to allow you to express whatever values make sense within the context of your career um, to the greatest extent that you can. And as you focus on skills that, that provide all this career capital, you're going to maximize your ability to shape your work into what you want it to be. And when your work is fulfilling, when your work aligns with your values, and when it's stuff that you like to do, why would you quit? You get to go do something that you enjoy, um, so long as it's continuing to align with your values. I do think this is worth taking seriously. Uh, all of us in this room, uh, especially, especially me, are super privileged to be in a time and a place that we have so much of a say over what our life looks like. And I'm, I'm glad we all get to go to places like this where we can think about that question and take it seriously and move forward in our life and our work with intention um, rather than just sort of going through in default mode. So I, I'd encourage you to think about these things. Uh, there are some more resources that have been useful to me as I think about this um, in terms of lifestyle-centric career planning or what makes a good life. Uh, I have enjoyed the book Taking Stock by Jordan Grummet, which is an excellent book about life wrapped around an all right book about financial independence. Uh, there's a couple copies on the table over there. I don't know who brought them. Uh, I think it's worth going through and doing the exercises. Cal Newport wrote an article called The Most Important Piece of Career Advice You Probably Never Heard Of. Uh, it is his description of lifestyle-centric career planning. Uh, if that sounded interesting to you, he does this professionally. I do it for fun. You probably want to read his version of it. Uh, career Capital, of course, so good they can't ignore you. Uh, Cal has another book called Deep Work. I think that's all I have. Thank you.